What's up everybody? This is the week. This week we're pushing through. We're pushing through all of the little bits and pieces, all the major tasks are getting wiped out this week. And we're doing some major updates on the van. Things that we have already deemed completed, we have a growing list of things that we wish we could do better. So, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> Thief! He stole my key! This week we have everything from plumbing, hydronic heating and electrics to upgrade and a bunch of other things that I cannot remember and things that are gonna just pop into my head and we'll have to do them. So let's get this show on the road and upgrade the van. It's a bit frost. As expected with uh, pretty much any do-it-yourselfer, and especially first-time uh, van builders, no matter how much you plan, there's a few things that uh, you sort of miss out and you think, oh, I should have done that better. And uh, uh, since we've been living in the van on and off for the past few months, since we obviously have completed the majority of it, uh, there have been a few niggles. Um, uh, the one we're going to start with is the sink. So essentially what happens... Uh, is that the water is not draining fast enough so let me see if I can replicate it at the moment but like when we're brushing teeth and stuff it starts to fill rather quickly and that doesn't take a lot of water there we go I mean okay so it's actually draining not bad actually it's draining, draining fine now keep pouring water there is a problem there is a problem it might be the way we're parked sometimes But, uh, so we are on an incline now. There you go, you can actually see. No, that's draining fine. Ah. That's draining fine. I think it's largely to do with then the, the tilt of the van. So what happens is essentially it doesn't drain very, very fast. It can take it like up to half an hour to an hour to actually drain from a, a, a less filled position than you, than you just, just saw it. Standard kitchen and sort of bathroom plumbing in houses is uh, between 40 mil and 32 mil. And what we've done is reduce it to 19, but that then also goes through a weird neck thing, which actually might reduce the uh, float that might be like necks of about, I don't know, I'm imagining 10 mil. I don't know, this is just a guess, but essentially there's points in the system that are very, very thin. So I'm like, I'm assuming that that's a problem. But we're thinking though, if we increase the diameter of the pipes that the, the, the everything's flowing through, it would drain better no matter the incline. Except that they just, they just drained fine and it's so confusing. You are embarrassing me. <laughs> We just poured five liters down that sink and it drained in about 20 seconds. Okay, so we're just gonna move it a few meters uh, forward so we're not on the incline, so we're on a flat, and do the same because it's draining perfectly fine in this position, so it must be just a tilt because if there's actually throttling in the pipework in terms of the flow, then it should be, do it should be like clogging up regardless of how we're parked yeah so there we are we're usually parked in the driveway which slants down so now we're flat let's see if the same problem occurs five liters five liters go on yeah. pour it all down immediately and by the way all of these experiments have been done with the tap on the tank open essentially yeah and the prob problems we've had uh, the, the tap has also been opened because we've pretty much not had any water in there so anyway, let's go. Right, so obviously it's going to clog up a little bit, but how quickly this water drains. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. And that's drained. Sam? Yeah. Grab a toothbrush, brush your teeth like you do in the morning. Ah, mm -hmm. What a weird video this is. <laughs> We've got a problem. No we don't. I don't know. <laughs> right. 
So use the same amount. Mm -hmm. Maybe use a little bit more to compensate for my, my usage as well. Spit. It's fine. The question is, do we upgrade it because we think it's stupid and we know it happens, or do we leave it? Right, so the wastewater pipe comes down through the van and goes down that way to the tank and connects up there. Hard to see, but it connects up there to the top of the tank. So there's no real low spots. I mean, it does have to travel, you know, a little bit up to go down. <coughs> but I can't see what the problem is. I don't really want to be doing work that I don't have to do at the moment because I can't figure out what the problem is uh, just from what, obviously what you've seen. As far as you know, it drains fine. As far as we know, it does not. Based on what you've seen, what do you think we should do? Should we upgrade the system or not? Or should we do change something else in it? Because I have no idea at the moment. What do you think, Sam? Is that is that a, 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 fair, a fair call? I think so. Okay, uh, so guys, our fate is in your hands. Our our, our sink clogging is in your hands. Um, okay, how about we move on to the next interesting part of the equation? The heating upgrade. Well, heating fuel tank upgrade. Oh, right. So uh, you desperately need a hat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's get in the van. Oh, I'll put the power back in. We'll get the heater back on, the electric heater. Okay. And then we'll get to work. Right. Job one done. Sort of. How was a, a good start to to the week? <laughs> um, okay. Moving on. Yeah. Moving on. So, for our diesel heater, how we've currently got it uh, wired up is we've got a line going into the diesel fuel tank of the van. Remember all those really long debates where, when we were like, should we get a separate fuel tank or should we tap into our existing diesel fuel tank and then we dropped the tank, tapped into <laughs> to, to, to our big diesel tank and basically that's how the heat has been running. Yeah. Well, that works great, no problem. However, it turns out that we are rather bothered <laughs> by the fact that we don't actually know how much fuel we're using and there's no way for us to actually test it. Yeah. Uh, so we don't actually know the efficiency of our heater mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, as a result we can't like troubleshoot if we need to uh, rearrange any lines or we, we can't answer any of your, your questions <laughs> of how efficient the heater is. It's really frustrating yeah. uh, that we don't know. So um, what we're gonna do, as you can probably tell, we bought a seven litre diesel fuel tank and we're going to run a line into this fuel tank instead. We're going to keep the tap that we did because that took an entire day of effort. And it's useful to have, honestly. And it's yeah. useful to have. So we're just going to cut the line and block it off. Um, and then basically from the filter run it into this tank. And the big problem that we had about installing a separate tank was where to put it. Yeah, but... <laughs> We didn't actually know of the existence of these thin tanks yeah. prior to this. So I was like, ah, oh, this is actually handy. Who thought of this? So we thought long and hard about where to actually put this fuel tank because we don't have a lot of space left inside the van area and we don't really want it in the living space because it's going to smell of diesel. So we're back to our original problem of where to put the fuel tank. And I think, frankly, the best place to put it is under our double swivel seat. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good in there. I mean, so we're going to have to bolt through that to come out uh, over here. But that will just require a hole and some bolting. That's where the fuel line connects to, right there. See that little thing? And then it will just loop down. Right, so to connect that extra tank, what I've done is the red line is the one that actually comes from the van's fuel tank and the line above it is now a line that actually runs inside the van. So I actually ran a fuel line through kind of like an existing hole. It had like a rubber cap on it. So I just drilled a hole through the rubber cap and then poked the fuel line down. It came on top of the fuel tank. I'll show you a picture here. And I've connected that up to the fuel filter. So now that goes straight to the... Uh, diesel heater and the red line which is the one from the van's fuel tank I've capped off in case we ever want to use that line for anything else it's useful to have. Now that that's connected up we can go inside the seat and connect the fuel tank together and that should be that. We hope. Hmm. Ah. 
Aha. Okay. That's the fuel tank in. Let me reconnect that line and uh, that should be good. Right, so it's night time now. I've showered and shaved and I'm uh, feeling and a lot better. Yeah, and now we're heading to uh, the fuel station to put some fuel in our new tank and test the system. As far as I know, Sam did a very good job with moving the fuel line today. Uh, I was off working on some projects and uh, <laughs> studying. We have been really struggling with honestly finishing the van build at this stage <laughs> because it's so close. Uh, to the point where we could just leave those things unfinished and uh, deal with it. Because yeah. they're niggles. Go. They're niggles. They're not um, problems. They're niggles. Know. They're things that we want to just kind of just yeah. please fix. Yeah, and, and because it's like like only like two weeks of work, we're like, okay, just let's just finish them and then we'll go. <laughs> and then these are probably the hardest two weeks so far of the entire two years. <laughs> it's literally driving me insane. So yeah, that's why I adios and left Sam to do it, because he volunteered. Um, I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I went to do other stuff. Off your butt. All right, I'll be focusing, lads. Lads, dudes, guys, people, humans, animals. So I'll fill up the red tank first and then our fuel tank. And then we'll siphon this into there. Not here though. Yeah, we'll have to move the seat. Yeah. That needs clean up now. Yeah, I'm on it. Right, system on. I'll just turn it on and we'll turn it off in 10 minutes time as long as everything kicks on and we're good. I hear stuff. So there'll be residual diesel in the line from the original line, but it needs to pull new diesel from that tank to the fuel filter. So if we leave it running 10 minutes, that should be long enough for it to have to pull more out of this tank. I don't know if you'll be able to see it go through that line. I doubt it, but uh, I'm just keeping an eye for any leaks or bubbling or intention to explode. Uh, okay, we just got a H1 error code. It, it just said uh, f uh, fuel, 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 uh, fuel or pump basically uh, uh, error obviously we know it's the fuel because that's what we me messed around with uh, I think we might have to just prime the line to get get, get that uh, larger air bu bubble out because it might be too long of a distance uh, but we're gonna have to do it in the morning because we haven't eaten lunch and it's getting dinner time and somewhat somewhat trembly and headachey because of it Careful not to drop diesel on your head. <laughs> Do the best. Yeah. I chop that in there. Is it coming out? I can't see a thing. Yeah, there's diesel coming out. Yeah, there we go. we're good the air matrix lights are on and we're getting air from from here Sam I think it works you can get yourself out of there Sam Coming. Well, the air matrix turned on the air matrix turned on yeah so I think we're fine All um, right. that means it stabilized itself stabilized itself wonderful yeah no leaks Okay, well that's done. Uh, it's later on in the day now. We've ate, we've um, painted our deck. Sneak peek. That's that's uh, coming on soon. And uh, now we need to put the van back together. It's a bit of a mess. 
Yeah. Well, it didn't leak. We ran it for an entire hour, no problems. And it doesn't, I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't look like the fuel level actually went down that much. I mean, we filled it literally to the top. Couldn't have filled it any more. And mm -hmm. it's just gone down a tiny bit. Yeah. We need to find a way to measure the, the literage of that. Yeah, because in theory, we know that the diesel heater on full power uses half a litre of diesel an hour. But I imagine it's not on full power for the entire of that hour. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, that will be a, a, a later thing that we'll do. But for now, diesel tank works. So that's good. Do you want to do the step next? I was thinking so, because it's not overly freezing at the moment. So we got this mat, so we basically just want to create a uh, shoe wiping uh, mat section, so just as you as you enter, but obviously not like that, we, we're planning to stick it. So uh, this trim is not working out, it was always supposed to be temporary, but basically it's catching socks and it, I don't like, I don't actually like how it looks. So I was thinking, so we remove this, then we'll have that mat stretching all the way around here. spray here first all right and then the carpet down there sorry what oh right spray up here then yeah, the carpet. spray the step first and then the carpet all right and uh yes we are using adhesive no we don't mind that um we'll have to unstick it to replace the carpet one we're probably going to be replacing the floor eventually because as, as we said in the floor video this is just sort of a temporary thing just so the floor is done <laughs> but uh i'm not a massive fan of the individual tiles like maybe if you said I probably won't be. We've got like a minute, I think, before it sets. Just... Don't pressure me. Three, four. Don't step on the glue. All right, go, go, go. Remove the gloves, they're gonna stick. Which way does it go? Ugh. Right. So the mask and tape line should give you. Oh, oh god. Great. Help. I need help. We've got our electrical system opened up. So, first of all, there's nothing wrong with the electrical system. It works as we intended it, as we built it, so it's fine. The main reason we want to upgrade it is because, well, a couple of times we've had to charge our starter battery, which requires disconnecting the green box down there, the AC charger. And disconnecting that means we kind of have to pull all the terminals off the battery which number one isn't easy, and number two is I don't want to have to keep doing that. And number three, it's not best practice. I mean, that spider web on the positive terminal over there and the one that's on the negative end of the shunt, we never liked. We just kind of did it. And as we bought an inverter, we added another one on and added another one on. And well, now it looks like that. 
So the main reason we're upgrading it is because what we're going to do is we're going to add some bus bars, which let me go and get one of them. So that's what a bus bar looks like. So it's essentially a plate that can handle a certain number of amps and each one can have a different connection. So instead of having six positives on our positive terminal, each of them can have their own stud and then we connect one to the battery. The only thing that we're not going to connect to these bus bars is the inverter because the inverter draws a lot of power which means these bus bars would have had to be rated for a much higher ampage. So this one which was rated for 150 amps was 40 pounds but the ones that are rated at like three, 400 amps which would have been enough for the inverter were like 100 pounds more expensive than this. So we need to figure out where we're going to fit these on our on our boards because we've got one for the positive terminal and we've got another one for the negative terminal for the BMV shunt because another thing we keep doing is when we disconnect our DC charger we keep forgetting to reconnect the ground and then we think our DC charger is broken only to realize that we didn't connect the ground again twice 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 we did it twice Okay, so I've spent the morning disassembling our electrical system. <laughs> Everything is a bit of a mess right now. The MPPT is kind of just down there chilling on the floor. There's a lot of cables absolutely everywhere. Long story short, it's getting there. We're getting somewhere. I've got all my eyelets there already. The bus bar, one's here, and I'm thinking this negative one is gonna go kind of just down there and I mean I'm gonna neaten it up as much as I can but the main reason for doing this as we said is safety the bus bars so we can disconnect stuff easier um, there's not a lot of space to work with either in this cupboard I mean as you can see this is as high as it can get so we can't raise this anymore and realistically we can't really move it left or right that much because you know we've got the heating over there and then well the doors right there so anywho I guess uh, I best get cracking. We've got all the negatives connected, so each negative is connected to its own one now, rather than all to the shunt. And then we have a giant 50mm cable going from the shunt, or the bus bar, sorry, into the BMV shunt, and the inverter also goes to the shunt as well. And then that all gets transmitted up to the negative of the battery. Negative done, positive to go. It's a bus bar. <laughs> it's on there. In theory, that should be that. I guess we connect it back up and uh, see if everything turns back on. All right, give it a test. Yeah! You didn't break it! I didn't break it. Hell yeah. So, charging ports. Yeah, the charging ports are working. Fridge. Yeah, the light turns on. Okay, I didn't break the electrics, so all the basic stuff seems to work. Uh, what about this? 
Right, so the heater module is on. The BMV, although it is completely wrong, is on. The inverter turns on with the light flicker. Yep, okay. Let's give you a quick tour then. So there are two main upgrades that happen to the electrical system. Um, and one is the bus bar. So we have a negative bus bar here. This essentially has all of the negative uh, lines for all the boxes. So the uh, the MPPT controller, the DC, um, the ground cable runs here as well. Uh, the fuse boxes. Because before we had all of these connecting here. Which, as I'm sure you recall, uh, it was getting rather ridiculous and really hard to maneuver. So we have a negative bus bar and then we have a positive bus bar doing the same thing essentially. Uh, again, uh, all of the boxes and such uh, have their positive coming to this uh, uh, bus bar and then you have a thick cable going to the positive of the battery. And other than that, in terms of these connections, nothing has changed. Just a bit tidier and we think a bit safer as well. Oh yeah, and guys, we flipped the MPPT because I know some of you were getting rather distressed at the fact that our ports were gathering dust. Um, you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, now it's flipped and is as sh it should be. So the ports are facing down and we've ex extended the cables and whatnot. The other major upgrade we did to our electrical system is we added a uh, switch, an on-off switch for a DC-DC charger. Uh, and that is right here. Ooh, just. just about. Yeah. Alright. Yep. This is uh, my throne. This is where usually, I'm usually the passenger. Uh, so it's placed so I can reach down, press this button, and that will cut power to the DC DC charger. Uh, because if we decide that this trip is uh, going to be a short trip, we're like, okay, well, let's prioritize the starter battery charging and not the DC charging. Or if there's any other problem, we know this with the DC DC uh, charger, we can just basically switch it off and that's it. We don't have to worry about it, we don't have to stop. And if we want to turn it back on, then you just reset. It's just on a resettable waterproof breaker there. Oh, this is right very, the very door. this is very painful to press with cold fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That that's currently on. Okay. Uh, so uh, that is another very crucial upgrade that, that we did because we have been having trouble with our starter battery uh, having low voltage. And first we thought it was just basically the cold. And because we were working night shifts a few months back, um, uh, we were taking a lot of short trips. So essentially, all the cold plus short trips, basically. Obviously the DC-DC charging is trying to prioritize the leisure battery charging and not actually allowing for the starter battery to, to fully charge as well. And we thought like over time, the, basically the voltage, voltage and, and the capacity is just dropping, which I think that was the case a few months ago. Um, but there's also another issue that we discovered a few days ago um, uh, when our starter battery once again, once again, decided that it didn't have enough voltage to start the van. Uh, and I kid you not, the problem this time is doors. It's that. The doors being open whilst we're working on the van. Yeah. So we, we chatted with, with a few of our friends um, and it turned out that uh, apparently uh, van doors being open actually discharges the starter battery ever so slightly and because with van builds or just basically living van life your doors are open quite a lot of the time and when you combine that with basically short trips colder weather it just doesn't help the problem so we basically this switch uh, allows us to control that and ensure that we actually do have enough voltage to actually start our van yeah all of these upgrades that we've done this video they have been uh, crucial nags on our mind things that we did not want to leave undone before we actually set off because there would have been a bit of a hassle to fix on the road and given that there's a few delays in terms of um leaving because of uh border issues and random random obstacles that, that we've encountered so we're like okay well let's use this time to actually get these little nags uh, out of the way. With these very crucial things off our mind, we're just about to go. We're gonna be taking a few uh, sort of uh, tester incremental trips out from base uh, just to troubleshoot this, this, a few a few final things. And we're still waiting on a few deliveries such as uh, the internet. Uh, we're doing a toilet upgrade, uh, so we're waiting for a few things to arrive on that. And we're gonna be talking about vehicle security, which is very important uh, just before we actually launch fully. Uh, but other than that, we're more, more or less good. Good to go. <laughs> okay, now, guys, the deck. The deck 
is done.